In this video, we are going to discuss this cost cell method for setting initial feasible solutions of transportation problem. This cost method is another method used to obtain initial feasible solutions for the transportation problem. In this method, the allocation of the shipment begins with the sale with minimum cost, meaning the lower cost sales are chosen over the higher cost sales with the objective of having the least cost of transportation. There are certain steps to be followed for setting initial feasible solution by using least cost sell method. Step 1. From the transportation W, select a sale with minimum cost and then allocate as much flow as possible to that minimum cost sale, meaning from the given cost matrix, select the minimum cost and allocate as much flow as possible to that cost matrix. In order to determine how much should be allocated, compare supply and demand corresponding to the selected sale and allocate the smaller one from these two. When tie between sales occur, that's when two or more sales have the same least cost, the convention is that selecting the sale which can receive most flow, if ties still exist, meaning the amount to be allocated to the tied sales is equal, choose any one of the two sales conventionally. Step 2. Reduce row supply and column and demand by the amount of flow allocated to the sale identified in step 1. After such reduction, if all supply is consumed, reduce the supply to zero and eliminate the corresponding row from further consideration by drawing a line through it. The other requirement, if all the demand is satisfied, reduce the demand to zero and eliminate the corresponding column from further consideration by drawing a line through it. After this reduction and elimination, we will continue to step three. Let's look at the uncrossed out sales to identify the next list cost sale and then continue with step one for all unlined rows and columns until all demand is satisfied and all supply is consumed. For better exposition of the steps involved, let's set the initial feasible solution for this transportation problem. Let's determine the initial feasible solution for the undermentioned transportation W by using least cost sell method and calculate the result total cost. Unit cost is given in here. This is a W containing sources at the left hand margin and their supply at the corresponding right hand margin. Destinations at the top and their corresponding demand at the bottom. Numbers in the W are unit transportation costs. So let's go through the steps to solve this problem. Step 1. Select a sale with minimum cost and then allocate that minimum cost sale with the smaller one from the corresponding supply and demand. The minimum unit cost in the given cost matrix is 2. Three sales are on tied with this minimum cost unit. That's origin 1 to destination 2 root, origin 2 to destination 3 root and origin 4 to destination 1 root. Whenever such ties occur, the convention is that select a cell to which most flow can be allocated. So let's compare the flow possible to allocate to these tied cells. Demand corresponding to origin 1 to destination 2 root is 4000 and the supply corresponding to it is 4500. Thus, the most flow that can be allocated to this cell is the smaller one of these two, that's 4000. Demand and supply corresponding to origin 2 to destination 3 routes are 4000 and 3000 respectively. So the smaller of these two that could be allocated to this cell is 3000. The estimated demand for origin 4 to destination 1 route is 3000 and the corresponding supply is 6000. The most flow that can be allocated to this cell is 3000. 4000 is the maximum of these three amounts that can be allocated. Hence, origin 1 to destination 2 route is the least cost sale selected to receive the flow of 4000. Step 2. Reduce row supply and column and demand by the amount allocated to the selected least cost sale. Row supply is the amount to the right hand corner of the row, that's 4500. So 4500 minus the allocated amount, that's 4000 is equal to 500. Column and demand is the amount at the bottom of the column and containing the allocated sale. That's 4,000. So 4,000 minus 4,000 is equal to zero. The rule after such deduction is that if all the supply is consumed, reduce it to zero and eliminate the corresponding row from further consideration by drawing a line through it. In this particular case, row supply is not reduced to zero, rather 500 units left unconsumed. The other rule is that if all the demand is fulfilled, reduce it to zero and eliminate the corresponding column from further consideration by drawing a line through it. Destination to demand is reduced to zero. This column has to be crossed out by drawing a line through it, and then we'll continue to step three. Step three, 
Look at the uncrossed out cells to identify the next discourse cell and then continue with step one for all unlined rows and columns until all the demand is satisfied and all the supply is consumed. At this stage, only destination to demand is fulfilled, but the remaining four destination demands left unfulfilled, and also the supplies of all the four origin left unconsumed. Hence, we have to continue our allocation starting from step one. Still origin two to destination three route and origin four to destination one routes are on time with a unit cost of two per. The amount that can be allocated to each of these cells is the same, that's 3,000. So these two cells are again on time. In such case, it's possible to use either of these two cells. For this case, let's use origin four to destination one route. The smaller one from the corresponding demand and supply, that's 3,000, has to be allocated to this cell. Deduction of the allocated 3,000 from the corresponding demand and supply will reduce the demand from 3,000 to zero and the supply from 6,000 to 3,000. Since destination one demand is reduced to zero, column one has to be crossed out by drawing a line through it. Among the uncrossed out sales, the one with least cost is origin two to destination three routes with a unit cost of two. Supply corresponding to this sale is 3,000 and demand corresponding to it is 4,000. So the smaller of these two, that's 3,000, has to be allocated to this sale. Allocation of 3,000 to this cell will reduce supply from 3,000 to zero and demand from 4,000 to 1,000. Since origin to supply is consumed, row two has to be deleted by drawing a line through it. From these nine unlined cells, the one with least cost is origin four to destination four root with a unit cost of three bill. Demand corresponding to this cell is 3,500 and supply corresponding to it is 3,000. Thus, 3,000 has to be allocated to this list cost cell. Demand corresponding to this allocated cell is 3,500. So 3,500 minus 3,000 is equal to 500. And supply corresponding to it is 3,000. Thus, 3,000 minus 3,000 is equal to zero. Origin for supply is reduced to zero, since row four has to be deleted by drawing a line through it. Now we're left with six undeleted cells. The list cost among these and deleted cells is forber, which is the unit cost of origin three to destination four routes. Unfulfilled demand corresponding to this cell is 500 and supply corresponding to it is 4,000. The last one, that's 500, has to be allocated to this cell. Reducing the allocated 500 from the corresponding demand and supply will reduce the demand from 500 to zero and supply from 4,000 to 3,500. All destination four demand is fulfilled since column four has to be crossed out by drawing a line through it. Origin one to destination five and origin three to destination three routes are on time with the least unit cost of six bill. The maximum amount that can be allocated to origin one to destination five route is 500, while that of origin three to destination three route is 1000. The cell that can receive the greater flow, that's the one as the route of origin three to destination three is the next least cost cell, the amount that can be allocated to this cell is 1,000. Reducing the allocated 1,000 from supply and demand, reduce the demand to zero and supply to 2,500 because 3,500 minus 1,000 is equal to 2,500. Destination three demand is reduced to zero since column three has to be crossed out by drawing a line through it. From the given five columns, only column five is left and crossed out. The undeleted cells in this column are origin one to destination five root with a unit cost of six bill and origin three to destination five root with a unit cost of seven bill. Six is less than seven, so the next list cost cell is origin one to destination five roots. Supply and demand corresponding to this cell are 500 and 3000 respectively. The smaller amount, that's 500, has to be allocated to this cell. Allocation of 500 to this cell reduce the supply from 500 to zero and demand from 3,000 to 2,500. Origin one supply is completely consumed since row one has to be deleted by drawing a line through it. The only uncrossed out cell at this stage is origin three to destination five routes. Supply corresponding to this cell is equal to demand corresponding to it, which is equal to 2,500. Actually, this cell is called a balancing cell. 
Allocation of 2,500 to this cell reduce both demand and supply to zero. At this stage, all demand and supply are reduced to zero. Hence, this is the initial feasible solution set by using least cost cell method. Resulted total cost is equal to occupied cell in column on one, that's 3,000 times two, plus the occupied cell in column on two, that's 4,000 times two, plus in column on three, 3,000 times two, plus another occupied cell in column on three, 1,000 times six, plus the occupied cell in column on four, 500 times four, plus another occupied cell in column on four, 3,000 times three, plus the occupied cell or allocated cell in column on five, that's 500 times six, plus another occupied cell in column on five, that's 2,500 times seven. 3,000 times two is 6,000, plus 4,000 times two is 8,000, plus 3,000 times two is again 6,000, plus 1,000 times six is 6,000, plus 500 times four is 2,000, plus 3,000 times three is 9,000, plus 500 times six is 3,000, plus 2,500 times seven is 17,500. The sum of these values give 57,500. In a separate video, this same problem was solved by using Norway's corner cell method, and the initial feasible solution obtained looked like this. From the comparison of these two initial feasible solutions, we can witness one basic difference. That is, the total transportation cost of initial feasible solution obtained by using least cost cell method, that's 57,500 bur, is less than the 72,500 bur total cost of Northwest corner cell method by 15,000 bur. In other words, the quality of initial feasible solution obtained by using least cost cell method is better than the one obtained by using Northwest corner cell method. This generalization is true in most of the cases because least cost cell method is based on looking for the minimum unit cost and allocating as much flow as possible to that minimum cost. While Northwest corner cell method is direction dependent method, that is starting from upper left cell and moving to the bottom right cell following a zigzag pattern through a diagonal of the cost matrix without considering the unit cost. In rare cases, especially if the least costs are concentrated on the diagonal of the cost matrix, Northwest corner cell method can produce better initial feasible solutions than least cost method. By this, I conclude this section. Goodbye.